In this short video, I'll demonstrate how to use the Kelly Letter Signal Calculator on the subscriber site. This calculator will go through your own personal plans and tell you exactly what to do for each of your signal plans each quarter. Those could be the 3% signal, the 6% signal, or the 9% signal. The calculator can handle any one of them. To get to it, you simply go to the calculator tab up here on the subscriber site, and it'll take you to the page I'm already on. Once you're there, you'll notice right up front, see over here where it says, first start your plans at the base reset allocations. You have to have your plans already going before you can use the calculator. If you, if you tell it that you invested nothing last quarter, it won't know what to do. So make sure you've already started your plans before you get in here and start, um, start trying to generate your own signals. Now scroll on down, we've got two tabs here. The calculator, which is the default where you'll start. The one on the right is called the allocator. That makes it even easier for you to just follow along with the letter. So for example, if you see in a quarterly Kelly letter that after I run the signals, we are allocated 85% stocks and 15% bonds in 3SIG, for example, you could just skip all these calculations for yourself based on your own account's history and just say, I want to also be 85, 15 stocks, bonds, and the allocator will tell you what to do. We'll get to that one in a second. First here on the calculator page, the top field is just the name. I could call mine Jason Kelly as is pre-filled in here, but you should call it something more meaningful to you. Today we'll use 3SIG. We're going to calculate the quarterly, the quarterly signal for a 3% signal plan using past data from the letter. The next field is round to whole share amounts. I prefer that and almost everybody does as opposed to fractional shares and so the default here is yes. If for some reason you'd like to change it, just click on here and it'll toggle over to no. But the default is yes and you should probably just leave it there. Coming down, this is the quarterly growth target. Now 3SIG uses 3%, that's why it's called the 3% signal. But you can see on the, the scale over here on the right that you could choose any percentage you want, which is handy because we also have 6SIG, you could take it up to there or 9SIG, you can take it up to there. You can either click on the quarterly amount you want or you can just move this along like that and, and, and select it that way. The default is 3% for 3SIG and that's what we're gonna to use today. Stock fund balance after last quarter's action. You'll have this in, in your account. It's easy to figure. Once you get done with your orders, let's say, just to keep it simple, you bought 100, 100 shares of your, your stock fund, you had 190 shares total. Whatever your fill price was last quarter, just multiply that by the number of shares you had afterwards, and that'll be your stock fund balance. And same for the bond fund balance in the next, the next field here. Now, for this example, I'm going to use a quarterly ending balance of 943.040. So we had our, our stock fund balance after last quarter's action and a quarter of the, the letter was $943,000. $943,040, I put that in here, and the bond fund balance was $144,254. This 80%, that, that's the target capital allocation in the stock fund. Again, 3SIG uses 80%, so that's what the, the, the default is, but you can adjust that too, and you will need to do that for 6SIG and 9SIG down to 60%. But for this one, we're going to keep it right here at 80% for the calculations. New cash added to bond fund in current quarter. And if you're ever not sure what's going on with these, you can just hover over, over these uh, question marks here and it'll pop up with a quick, quick explanation for you. So there's, there's inline help as you go along. New cash added to bond fund. Now here's a hint. Many newcomers miss this point. All new cash goes into the bond fund. All. Pay attention. All. That means distributions, new money coming in from outside, anything that goes into the plan goes into the bond fund. You do not divide the money up as it goes in. So if you're sending $1,000 into your plan, you don't put 80% of it in the stock fund and 20% in the bond fund. No, it all goes into the bond fund because this calculator or the spreadsheet will automatically add half of the value of that new cash to your signal line. That's historically proven to be the best way to draw money in um, gently, I guess gradually over time in order to, to not go all in at once. So you don't have to think about it. Just make sure you add all new cash distributions, new capital into your bond fund. Just add up the tally and put it into this field. The letter doesn't add new money 
each quarter because that would introduce the possibility of distorting results. So the letter always has a stagnant amount of, of capital in each plan, but it does receive distributions. They don't add up to much, but nonetheless, in order to follow along with the letter of the plans, we do keep track of them here. And in this case, it was just distributions. It added up to $3,428. Stock fund shares currently owned, that's easy enough. Just look right in your account, how many stock fund shares do you have? We had 11,904. And how many bond, oh, the stock fund current closing price was 7,701. Stock fund current closing price, 7,701, yes. And bond fund shares currently owned, we had 1818 and the closing price of running this was 7973 um, 7993 rather that that's easy enough and this won't be hard to find in your account history especially if you're truly following the plans and only only making adjustments once per quarter you're not going to have a whole lot of history there a couple distributions maybe uh, you might have three monthly distributions from your bond fund and maybe one distribution from your stock fund and then you'll have your new cash that's going in but there's really not a whole lot to keep track of just how many stock fund shares do you have what's the current price bond fund shares that's what i love about this and what you're going to come to love about this too you don't need any headlines you don't need any prognostications you just keep going through this which i should keep doing right now instead of getting excited about how well these plans work all right desired limit price for stock fund action now this defaults to nothing being in this field, and you should probably just leave it that way. The way the letter runs is, is it calculates the signals that go out to subscribers on a Sunday, and then at the market open on Monday is when the orders fill. It's just a market order. Now, is that going to be exactly the price you wanted? Almost never. And yet, guess what? You don't care. Because one quarter later, you can adjust that, as you'll see in just a moment. Now you could put it in here. The example it shows over here on the left is 77. If you want, and, and by the way, it shows you that because your stock fund current closing price is 7701. So the calculator is guessing, hmm, if you want to do a limit price, it's probably going to be close to that. So maybe 77, but just leave it blank is my recommendation. And it's what I do every single quarter. Now, the next area is reset target allocation in current quarter. No, this is almost always no. Every once in a while we do a base reset. It's based on different rules. Um, and if so, you say yes, and the calculator will just calculate how to go back to 80-20 stocks, bonds for 3-SIG or 60-40 stocks, bonds in 6-SIG and 9-SIG. Now, this next one is key to your success and lack of concern in the stock market. Did stock fund order fill at desired price last quarter? The default here is no because it almost never works out. Uh, and I shouldn't say works out. It, it, it doesn't matter. We don't care what price these orders fill at. And you don't need to care either. You need to get out of the media mode of obsessing over every little fluctuation in the stock market. It does not matter where your orders fill. And this is why. Did stock fund order fill at desired price last quarter? No. And all you do when the answer is no is come down to the next field. What was the desired fill price last quarter? In our case, the desired fill price last quarter was 77.86 so there it is now you're wondering what is this what's going on here in the letter i calculate the quarterly signals based on the previous friday's close usually unless it was a holiday then it'll be a thursday but basically it's the previous friday's close so all the calculations for that quarter's signal that that go to you on sunday mornings are based on friday's close then we place market orders to be filled at the open the next day, Monday. Those prices are usually fairly close to Friday's close, but not always, and they can be wildly different, and you don't need to care. If you get into the business of choosing limit orders, then you're, you're second guessing. Will the fund go up a little? Will it go down a little? And this, the whole, one of the main benefits of these plans is to get away from those kind of guessing games. So why bother? Just skip it. Let the market go where it goes. Say no, your price didn't fill where you th were at the previous Friday's close last quarter, and here you put in what the fill price was in this field. At that point, you are done, and you come over here and kick, uh, click Calculate. Where does that go? Right down here. You can see everything you need to run your signal right here. Let's go through. So 
it tells you you're going to need to sell. That's what the, the minus mark indicates. You're going to need to sell 496 shares of your bond fund. That will enable you to buy 515 shares of your stock fund. And it's showing you here on, on the left in the field here. It's going to be at 7701. That means that was the calculation it used. And it'll tell you right here. If you specified a desired limit price, it's used here. If you didn't, this value is using your stock fund's current closing price. This is your current stock fund balance, and here's your bond fund balance. And this is the current stock bond fund allocation, 8614. There's your signal line in the next row. Then this is your shortfall. So we didn't make it up to our target. That means we're, th we're $39,638 short this quarter. That's why we're selling bond fund shares to buy that shortfall up in the stock fund. Estimated stock fund balance after the current quarter's action will be this. This will be the estimated bond fund balance, which means after these actions happen, your allocations will be about 90-10. You're wondering, well, how can I follow along and keep a history? I'm glad you asked. Right down here, you can type in your email address. Um, I would use jason at jasonkelly.com. It's actually already pre-selected here. And then you just click send, and off it goes to you. Results sent. And you can keep these in your, your email history. That way you'll have a, a nice, concise history of how your plans have gone each quarter as, as time goes by. And by the way, the, the subject line will include whatever you typed in up here to make it easier for you to, to keep track of things. That's how it works. I, I hope you... Oh, I almost forgot, didn't I? I was going to conclude there, but we do have this allocator tab here. So um, remember down here on the calculator page, we said after this, the, the allocations are going to be 90-10. Well, this would show up in the Kelly letter on Sunday. So if you decided you didn't want to go through all this, you just wanted to match what the Kelly letter was doing, which was going to be a 90-10 stock bond allocation. When you came in here, let me just clear these fields out. When you came in here, you could go over to the allocator instead and go through and you would, um, let's call this three sig again, round a whole share amounts. Go through the, the same the same things we just did. Um, stock fund shares currently own eleven nine oh four. Stock fund current closing price was seventy seven oh one. Bond fund shares currently owned was not nine eighty one. Eighteen eighteen. Bond fund current closing price was seventy nine ninety three. And remember, it, we said uh, 90, 90, 10, right? It was going to be 90% stock stock allocation. And you don't have to put in the 10% bond because it knows that that's just whatever's left over. And we're going to leave this blank so we don't, um, we don't specify limit price. And go ahead and calculate. And this will look familiar. So just by doing the allocation match, you can see that you, you get the same the same results. And so a lot of people have asked for that. They said, why should I have to go through all the calculations when I can just say the Kelly letter is doing a 90% stock allocation. So I would like to do that too. And you can right here on the allocator tab, which remember you get to by clicking this instead of this. I hope this helps and that you take full advantage of the calculator. It's one of the, the main benefits of being a Kelly letter subscriber is that you have access to this wonderful tool that helps you make the right moves in the stock market based on price movement alone. Proper rational reaction to price movement is the key to your long-term success. You don't need anybody's opinion, nobody's guesswork on where the market will go next. You just need numbers and a calculator that will tell you what to do with them. This is it, and now you know how to use it. Happy sigging!